nice to finally uh, meet the man, uh, put a face to the name in real time. <laughs> no, no, just the fat face to the name. It's all good. Um, so introduce yourself to everyone now that I hit record. Awesome. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm currently a resident physician in uh, Manhattan at Mount Sinai Hospital, and I plan to do my fellowship next year at um, Massachusetts General Hospital, which is one of the Harvard Medical School hospitals. My eventual goal is actually to go into uh, digital health. I'm not so much in clinical practice, and it's something I discovered you know, in residency uh, in clinical practice is that a lot of times the things that block innovation is not so much the scientists. They're very smart. They have new research every single day coming out. But it's the regulatory uh, aspect that kind of slow things down. One thing that I've actually liked about the current administration of FDA is that they're actually very open to innovations, right? They have the, uh, uh, they have the legislation with respect to uh, uh, the right to try. And also now FDA is opening up something called a software as medical device, which is something I'm personally very interested in. Essentially, uh, right now, most digital health platform and softwares are still being regulated as hardware devices, which has a very, very long product cycle and extremely stringent uh, testing um, um, criteria. But with software, it's much higher turnover, much higher turnover, much more rapid development, and also uh, it has to be able to be updated as new um, uh, changes. Are made. In the traditional model, what happens is that when you update a piece of device, you have to essentially revalidate the whole thing, which can take many years. Right? But with the software, we want that st uh, update to be pushed out right away. So that means yeah. actually open up to they're actually open to new regulatory frameworks specifically designed for software. And this has never been done before. Right? The, right now, the FDA does not even have a final version of their um, regulatory guidance out yet. Right, the, the last version was 0 0.2 out in June of last year. They're still waiting to release a 1.0 version. So, so for the people who are watching this, yeah. uh, FDA stands for Food and, Food and Drug Administration. Exactly, exactly. They are the uh, main uh, body that's in charge of regulating uh, both food and uh, pharmaceuticals and any kind of medical devices. So as the future of physicians and doctors in the world that you're going to be, what are you, how are you looking to leverage this change in the, re the regulatory uh, position? So one thing is that I, uh, I want to be able to be in a position where we can make the regulatory uh, aspect the least burden possible, right? Because the government can make things as burdensome as possible, putting a lot of bureaucratic red tape, or it can be other side and, and be with uh, very much pro-innovation and make things as easy to innovate, easy to bring to market as possible. And I think right now the current FDA is on the latter side where they want to make things as easy to come to market as possible while still making sure that risks are managed and patients are safe. Um, are you working on a particular project yourself? Right now, I'm not working on any particular project. I'm kind of just uh, keeping tabs on what's going on. Um, being a resident physician, my time is mostly dedicated to patient care. There's uh, not as much time as I would like um, doing just the R&D and my personal interests. Um, that's something I hope you explore in fellowship at MGH in Boston, where I have some more free time. Um, and also perhaps down the line uh, after my fellowship, just uh, in terms of a uh, career overall. Um, so that's kind of where, where I see myself going, and, and uh, that's kind of where my interests are at the moment. Hmm. So what's the longest you've ever been awake while working? Oof. Uh, the longest I've been awake while working is 40 hours. That's four zero hours. Um, we, I, I started on a Monday. I think I finished on a Tuesday. Uh -huh. um, and Tuesday, Tuesday, Monday morning, I think I finished Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. I don't remember exactly at that point. Uh, I went to bed and woke up about 24 hours later, um, just sleeping straight. I, I looked at my clock after I woke up. I thought I only slept like a couple minutes um, because the time didn't change that much. Yeah. But that's when I realized I checked the date. It's actually the next day. So, uh, so how do you, is that a good thing or a bad thing working 40 it's, hours? I would say it is overall a bad thing. Once in a while, it seems very exciting getting things done, but it's not something you want to do every day. Um, initially, I actually wanted to go into, uh, go into surgery, which I really love. Um, but after uh, doing surgery for a few months, I realized that what is exciting is not something that I want to do as a lifestyle. It's like you can go parachuting. It's fun once in a while, but to do it every single day may not be the best for your for uh, I love that state. analogy. I love that analogy. Yeah. So uh, coming up on our five minutes, we like to keep this short. Yeah. If there's name the top two things that people should know or be aware about, uh, from your perspective as a, as a physician, either about health or about uh, health care? 
health and healthcare well. I think a lot of it's really, one thing is that a lot of the innovation that cannot happen right now is because healthcare is the most regulated uh, sector there is, I would say. A lot of uh, tech sectors, like any of the big companies, the software startup, they want to go into the healthcare space, thinking they can just build something, put it out there, and bam, they'll be uh, uh, overnight billionaires. Unfortunately, healthcare is the opposite of that. There are so many free letter organizations regulating healthcare. Uh, it is an overall long process. This is why most healthcare is done by large pharmaceutical companies with billion dollar um, with billion dollar budgets, right? And, and only then do they make money when they have a blockbuster drug. Uh, once in a while. But so on average, so any kind of healthcare innovation takes about usually half a decade and multiple billions of dollars before it can come into market, right? Um, which makes it very exciting for the new software as medical device because now instead of producing a drug uh, per se, you're actually making software. So you kind of bridging the gap between the software side, the engineering side versus the actual consumer uh, patient side, right? Mm -hmm. And because the FDA is actually very open to uh, not using the old framework but creating a new framework. They're trying to shorten that development cycle to make it so that product can actually come out to market sooner. Because unless the product is available on market, patients can't really use it to help themselves, right? And also because if the product is not on available on market, uh, insurers won't even pay for it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's kind of the the buck stops with the regulators, right? It's unless regulators are willing to try new things no one can really use anything that's new, so. Um, I love it, I love it. Unless yeah. regulators are willing to try new things, nothing will happen, so. Exactly. Last last point, give us one health tip. Any health tip, oh, I would say fasting. Um, fasting. I would say, oh, I, yeah, absolutely. So intermittent fasting is something that people, there's a big craze about it, but that's something that I personally have been doing for a long time, I would say since, oh, oof, since 10, 15 years ago. Um, as part of my faith, I fast a lot. In fact, I would say of all the Abrahamic faiths, whether you're Christian, Jewish, or you're Muslim, one thing they do agree on is fasting, right? So every single one of those religions has fasting. Other world religions have fasting. Buddhism, Hinduism, it all fasting. So um, I believe because there is a lot of uh, health benefits to it as something that has passed, been passed down to us, the oral tradition, and now medicine, right? Western medicine, scientific medicine is slowly catching up to what we have known for thousands of years. So definitely try fasting. There's a lot of uh, information online. You can uh, easily find it. It is one of the best things that we can do for our bodies. Awesome. So tell people where they can find you at, Richard. So you can hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm under Richard Huang. Uh, last name is spelled H-U-A-N-G. You can always email me at richhuang at gmail.com. That is R-I-C-H-H-U-A-N-G at gmail.com. Excellent. Thank you very much. And we're going to have to have a follow-up conversation about fasting. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Maureen Morat, she's my partner and lawyer, yeah. and she's all about intermittent <laughs> fasting. So we'll have to talk about that later or next time. All right. All right. Very much. All right. Thank you very much, Samson. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Likewise.